Hello, welcome to another module of this course, Microwave Integrated Circuits. In the previous module, we had covered on binomial and Chebyshev uh, impedance transformation network. In this module, we shall be covering another special category of impedance matching networks known as tapers. Now, we saw that when we have multi section uh, transformers, both for the binomial or the Chebyshev uh, polynomials that we had considered, the bandwidth increases when we increase the number of sections. That is the general trend that we saw. So, then logically we should be, uh, we should have a intuition that if we keep on increasing the number of sections, then our bandwidth should go on progressively becoming larger. And then when we make the number of sections as infinite, we should have an infinitely large bandwidth. Uh, that is the intuition of course, but is it true in reality? So, for that we have to first, uh, so to, to find out whether uh, indeed such a thing is a possibility, uh, let us try to analyze these special uh, classes of circuits where an infinitely large number of uh, sections are present and these classes of circuits are known as tapers. So, to analyze, so as I said if we go, the common intuition might suggest that if we go on increasing the number of sections as is the case in tapers. Uh, then we should obtain an infinitely large bandwidth. So, first thing is if we write the gamma k values that we had been writing in the previous sections as given like this, okay, let me write it properly. Okay. So, this is the value of the gamma k or the mismatch factor between adjacent uh, transmission line segments that we had stated earlier. Now, in the limit when say the difference between z k plus 1 and z k is differential or very small that is say gamma k I define as. Uh, so, if we if we write the gamma k once again as the as given by z plus d z minus z upon z plus d z plus z. Here z plus d z and z are the characteristic impedances of the subsequent and preceding uh, transmission line segments respectively. And since this is the mismatch between two sections which have infinitely small differences in their characteristic impedances, I can write instead of writing it as gamma k, uh, let me write it as d gamma k or I can altogether remove this subscript and straight away write it as d gamma. Now, this expression can be further simplified or rather I should say approximated to d z upon z. Here, the denominator contains uh, uh, two z terms z and this z and this d z being very small compared to the z values. I can simply write 2 in the denominator and then in the numerator this z cancels this z. And so, this, this then becomes equal to 1 upon z d capital Z upon d small z and this whole multiplied by d small z. Now, here this small z is the distance factor. That is this expression shows the variation of the characteristic impedance with respect to the distance along the taper. So, then my complete expression for d gamma becomes
this is my complete expression for d gamma. Now, depending on what kind of relationship I have between this z and uh, this uh, my small z, that will give rise to various kinds of taper. Now, if I come back to the original expression for gamma in, now this using the Fourier series expansion that I had described earlier can be given like this. Now, here this uh, instead of taking this as uh, this as uh, individual values of k in the limit that the delta z becomes equal to 0 or approaches 0, because this b delta z now represents our theta and since this delta z is approaching in the limit that it is approaching 0, uh, I can re write this instead of this summation expression, I can write this expression as an integral whose limits are from z to z equal to 0 to z equal to capital L, where capital L is the say if this is one end of the taper, then if the beginning of the taper is at z equal to 0, then the end is at z equal to capital L. So, it is something like this, I hope it is visible. This is instead of this integral expression, I now instead of this summation expression, I have an integral for gamma in. Now, depending on as I said what the impedance profile or this capital Z as a function of Z is, I get various types of tapers. Now, this is the mathematical description of taper. I said that a taper is a impedance matching network, which has infinite number of sections. Uh, the question is how do we achieve this or what does it physically look like? Now, if we consider a simple microstrip line, which is as we said in the previous class are basically PCB boards. Uh, so, this is our PCB board say with our top metal line like this. Then, if the width of this line gradually varies, then the impedance or the characteristic impedance of this line will also gradually vary and thus we will have an impedance profile z of z, where z is in this direction. For a coaxial cable, it might be the way we can achieve is by having the diameter of the cable slowly changing this way this part will have a lower impedance as compared to this part because of this lower thickness and here also we will have a variation of the characteristic impedance with distance and thus we can achieve a taper or if we consider a parallel plate waveguide where in the previous class in the previous modules I had said parallel plate waveguide is nothing but two infinitely long plates at a constant distance from each other, but if we want to implement taper then the plates will not be infinite anymore and the distance between them will keep varying. So, the various uh, kinds of uh, tapers that we have uh, the first most common uh, type of taper or from a mathematical point of view the most common uh, commonly described taper is what we call an exponential taper. So, the exponential, exponential taper has an impedance profile uh, like this 
where a is a constant z0 is also a constant z capital z is the characteristic impedance and small z is the distance along the paper and so from here we see that at z z equal to 0 is equal to z0 and a is can be given by this expression where this capital L is defined as that distance where z of small z equal to L becomes equal to R L. So, it is like the it is the point along it is that distance along the taper where we connect the load resistance. So, now using this formula if we try to find out an expression for the gamma in. So, the gamma in value is found using the integral expression that we had described earlier just in a few moments ago. So, this is the expression for the input reflection coefficient uh, of a of a of a exponential taper and uh, as we as we you know for various values of theta or this uh, uh, or as this distance from the input changes uh, the value try to find out the value of gamma in using the expressions for the exponential taper that we just derived. The gamma in value can be written as And then on simplification, this comes out like this. So, we see that this gamma in uh, for this uh, exponential taper is is proportional to a sink function. There are other uh, kinds of tapers uh, that we see in uh, that we commonly use. Uh, one of these tapers if we could go back to the monitor slides uh, is what we call the triangular taper function. Now, the derivation of the triangular taper function is not so simple it is actually the combination of two Gaussian functions. Uh, in that case the gamma in value is given like this which is actually proportional to the square of the sink function. So, the reason so the so the inference that we can uh, derive for this uh, triangular taper uh, function or this triangular taper is that uh, the frequency uh, is if we go back to the slides you see that this blue green line represents the input reflection coefficient of a triangular taper and this red line represents the input reflection coefficient of a exponential taper and we see that the frequency of the ripples for the triangular taper is actually half that of the that of the exponential taper and this is because of the presence of the sink square term in this expression for gamma in of the triangular taper whereas for the exponential taper we have a sink function only there is no power of sink. 
so uh, so one other type of uh, taper that is commonly used uh, is what is called a Kropfenstein taper if you can go back to the slides on the monitor uh, it is again it involves a complicated uh, impedance profile it is actually the integral of a modified Bessel function and uh, the expression for gamma in that we get is something like this and uh, if we again see uh, the Klopfenstein taper this purple or violet line represents the taper of the, the impedance uh, the frequency characteristics of the input reflection coefficient of the various kinds of tapers and this purple line shows uh, the, clock, the characteristics of a Klopfenstein taper. One thing we note for the Klopfenstein taper is that uh, the ripples are all of the same height. For the exponential taper the ripples nearer to the DC have higher heights as compared to the ripples far away from DC whereas for the Klopfenstein taper all the ripples are of the same height and for, for the triangular taper the ripples are of minimum height but then the bandwidth is much lower as compared to both the Klopfenstein as well as the exponential taper. That is why this Klopfenstein taper is often a good compromise between bandwidth and ripple height because for the exponential taper we see that we get the widest possible bandwidth but then we also get the highest ripples. For the triangular taper we get the lowest height of the ripples but we also get the lowest bandwidth and Klopfenstein taper is uh, somewhere between the two. So, in summary uh, I would like to mention that uh, tapers are very commonly used in, uh, in microwave engineering. Uh, in fact, at any time we want deflections at any surface or any device to be less, tapers are commonly used and tapers also prevent the formation of uh, spurious reflections they also uh, prevent the formation of what are called evanescent modes because any sharp corner or any sharp transition always gives rise to undesirable modes. Tapers solve that problem, they help to gradually move from one impedance to another impedance and in that way they, they uh, en enable us to have smooth impedance transition as well as Tapers are also often used in antenna structures. In fact, various of many of the uh, many of the commonly used antennas are tapers themselves. For example, the horn antenna, or the TEM horn antenna, or the pyramidal horn antenna, or the corner antenna. They are all examples of tapers that we use in commonly, and they serve an important purpose in microwave engineering as well as antenna engineering. Thank you. Thank you.